Looking at our current media landscape, we can see that the cartoons that reign supreme right now are Amphibia, The Owl House, as well as Miraculous Ladybug. But I really want to look back. I really want to look at a set of cartoons that not only changed a whole generation, inspired a whole new fashion style, as well as changing femininity as we know. And these set of cartoons are what I like to call the holy trifecta. As a child growing up in the early 2000s, there was a bunch of different shows that I was exposed to and grew to love. Whenever these shows were on my TV screen, I would watch them religiously and I would eventually become obsessed with them as you can see by these terribly drawn Monster High and Winx Club OCs. And as you can see by how many of these original characters that I drew and created, I was not only obsessed with Winx Club, I was also obsessed with Monster High. It would only be later on that I would be really introduced to the Bratz, but I really began to love the Bratz when I watched their Dark Fairy movie and also started to really watch the Bratz animated TV show. And what really inspired me to fall in love with these cartoons is how diverse they were for their time. So I'm just going to be reading off my script and giving you guys some of the facts about the Bratz. The original Bratz clique included a Caucasian doll named Chloe, an African American doll named Sasha, a Latina doll named Yasmin, and an Asian doll named Jade. And what really made me love the Bratz is how racially diverse they were because growing up in the inner cities of Baltimore, I was really only surrounded by a bunch of black people and sometimes white people. So seeing Asian Asian people and seeing Latina people was a first time for me and the Brad series really did a good job at exploring those cultures for me and what also caused me to love the Brad series as a whole is how these girls from different backgrounds were able to come together and were able to put their love of fashion together and the fact that all of these racially diverse girls that came from different backgrounds were able to put all of their differences aside and become really good friends with their shared interest in fashion was something I really enjoyed as a kid I also really enjoy seeing good female friendships like I love media that's able to pass this test I forgot the specific pronunciation of this test but it's a test where it's girls able to talk for at least a couple of lines about something that wasn't a boy and I really love these cartoons for giving me that as a young kid but it wasn't just the brass that gave us a really racially diverse friend group the Winx Club also did a good job at doing this too so unlike the brats the Winx girls were actually based off real people so I'm going to be reading off my script again and giving you guys a deep look at that so flora is latina and she's based off jennifer lopez and bloom is white and she's based off britney spears which is surprising because i thought stella would have been based off britney spears aisha is black and based off beyonce and musa is asian but she's specifically said to be chinese because she's based off lucy Liu. and stella is a white italian which makes sense because winx the winx club is originally an italian show but what's so weird is that she doesn't have a specific person based off her which is weird because Stella is a baddie but I guess she was so good at being herself she didn't really need anyone to influence her and the last girl that I have to mention is Tecna and Tecna is based off the singer Pink which makes sense because Tecna has that tomboy stem type look and so does Pink. And one thing I loved about Rings Club is how much they were unapologetically girly. Like they would have the girls changing up their outfits every other day. Like I remember there was one episode where they went to the safari and I just loved tuning into the Winx Club to see what they were gonna wear next. And unlike a lot of cartoons at this time, the Winx had a plot. So every week I would make sure I watched every episode so I didn't miss this, I didn't miss that. I remember I really fell in love with the dark bloom plot line they had during season one or two where Bloom got kidnapped by Valtoy. Like the Winx was giving the girls plots. Like, I just love the Winx Club. And one thing that really made me so happy about the Winx is how they made the girls so empowered. Like, because of the fact they had magical powers, they were able to always be command of themselves. Like, if someone attacked them, they'd be able to fight back. And they had power, so no one could talk to them reckless. Because, for example, Stella is the princess of Solaria, and she got the sun and the moon. Like, who gonna talk to my sis crazy? Like, the reason why I love the Winx Club so much was the fact that they were able to take all these different girls some of these girls were princesses some of these girls were commoners some of these girls were even orphans and bring them together and have them be a good supportive group of friends towards each other because in a lot of the media that we got in the early 2000s it was demonizing femininity it was demonizing girls being friends with each other and it's just so nice to see 
media that portrays girls having a healthy relationship with one another and not obsessing over boys and fighting over boys and i also love how each character of the wings club was their own individual person each girl had their own storyline we obviously had bloom being the center of the story but we had stella and her plot we had aisha and her plot we even had like the the relationship between yuza and riven like the whole wings club was a show and the universe and the lore was expansive and i really enjoyed how the wings club was able to give girls something to enjoy that was deep and had a deeper meaning to it because for some reason when it comes to letting girls have girly media and have depth it's far in between and i also love the magical girl aspect it's very much in line with sailor moon which i also really love having an american magical girl show was really transformative for me as a young kid and i'm so glad that i was able to grow up watching the wings club and it wasn't just the wings club that had a wide array of different characters they come from a bunch of different backgrounds coming together to be friends monster high did that and i feel like they even did that better because with the way that monster high is they kind of have a monster of the week type format where they can get a new character every week from a different culture a different mythology and introduce them into the overall monster high mythos and one thing i really loved about monster high is how widely expansive their universe is before we were even talking about the mcu we had the monster high cinematic universe and monster high had an obnoxious amount of different movies and i'm just going to be showing you what they look like on the screen and because of how expansive the monster high universe really was there was a new creature slash girl slash boy slash i don't even know there was a new monster introduced almost every week every month or so and so i'm just going to be listing you guys some of my favorite characters that we got from this we have jen fire long who is chinese we have skeleton cavalaris who is mexican and obviously we have claudine wolf who is supposed to be our african-american representative and i really love how diverse these girls were because as i told you guys previously i was really sheltered as a kid so i wasn't really exposed to a bunch of these different cultures and monster high and how they had these characters they really allowed me to get to know a bunch of different races and ethnicities and different cultures and i really have to applaud monster high for doing this because it gave a lot of the young children of my generation a bunch of experience that we wouldn't have gotten if monster high wasn't a show and even though these shows weren't really good at giving us body representation they gave us different representation in terms of different cultures and different backgrounds and i really have to applaud these three shows for giving the girls what they needed because they really influenced a whole generation and that leads me to my next segment and that's how these three shows have affected our culture and hyper femininity as we know i really want to applaud wings club specifically for showing us that you could be hyper feminine dress in pink dress in short skirts wear crop tops have a full face of makeup and still be feminine and powerful because for some reason in our current western society we are so adamant on demonizing femininity and especially demonizing hyper femininity and i really have to thank these three shows for showing young girls like me that you could be all girly and you can dress in pink or whatever and you can still be feminine and powerful but i want to talk about how these three shows specifically have influenced our generation into fashion into art into all of that so if you guys have been on the internet for at least the last two years especially during covid you'll know of a little app known as tiktok and tiktok is an app where many people who have different interests will come make short videos and just discuss what they're interested in and recently i have seen a massive surge of people my age reminiscing about their shows that they used to watch as a kid and how it's affected them but the three main shows that i've seen on my for you page are monster high wings club and even the brats the brats has had a massive impact on fashion and our makeup trends and i really want to get into it most of the fashion trends that blow up on tiktok have to pay homage to one of the big three cartoons that i've been talking about in this video when we had the whole rise of the e-girl makeup trend the first thing i thought about was monster high the thick eyeliner the really dark intense dark eyeshadow the bold lips all of that can be accredited to monster high like if you're looking at let's say frankie frankie was the original e-girl if you're looking at her plaid if you're looking at her fishnets if you're just looking at overall the style that frankie gave the girls you can see that a bunch of the e-girl style can be attributed to monster high but we really have to talk about the hold that monster high has on the black alt girl community if you're looking at all of these recent wig trends all of these recent braid trends it's giving the girls 
monster high. Like recently I had my hair in braids like this and I wanted to have my braids like that because I wanted to give the girls Frankie. But if you're looking at this recent skunk dye trend or whatever, it's really giving the girls Cleo de Nile, it's giving the girls Frankie Stein, but it's mostly giving the girls Draculaura. Like when it comes to that whole gothic style of fashion and that bright pink and that black, it's giving the girls Draculaura. And you can really see the hold that Monster High has on fashion as we know it because of how much we were watching it as kids and absorbing it in. Because before Monster High, I had never seen fashion like that. And I have to thank Monster High for giving the girls, just giving the girls everything you needed to give. Thank you so much for the style inspo, the alts, the whole alts, the chains, like it was giving the girls everything you needed to. But let's really talk about the chokehold that the brats have on girls as a whole. So as you guys are seeing by the videos and the clips I'm putting on the screen, the girlies are really inspired by the brats. And I really feel like the brats as a doll franchise really gave the girls Y2K. When the girlies are trying to actually do Y2K inspired looks, they're really doing brats looks. And we can see that people just want to dress up like Bratz dolls. The Bratz was really giving the girls everything it needed to give. And we have the Bratz to thank for a lot of the current trends as well. The hoops, like... I just, I don't even know what to say, but the Bratz was really giving us style inspo. And I really have to say that Winx Club kind of ranks lower on this list of giving the girls fashion inspo because all of these looks were specifically stylized towards each individual girl. But still, I see a lot of people making outfits based on Winx Club characters. Like when I see a girl who's wearing a bright pink top and some green pants or vice versa, I immediately think of Flora. And I really have to say that Bratz, Winx Club, Monster High are really the big three of cartoons they really gave the girls everything they need to so in conclusion i really have to say wings club the brats and monster high are really the big three in terms of cartoons they taught us that hyper femininity isn't something to be demonized and or mocked and it also showed us that girls can be powerful in their femininity you can have a b face have your nails did and wear a tight little outfit and still be a powerful strong woman and i feel like that is something really impactful to young girls watching at the time and i also felt that it taught us that we can be who we are and still be girls at the end of the day you could be like techna and be kind of a tomboy and love technology you can also be like music and be a tomboy and be into music and still have a group of girly friends who will love and support you and so that is it for this video if you like this video make sure that you hit the subscribe button i got a bunch of content coming out for you guys like this video if you like this video make sure you comment something in the comment box and i'll see you guys in the next one